Today I want to talk about this amazing book, A La Prima 2 by Richard Schmidt. This is the final book in the list I made, the 50 books for the self-taught artist. Uh, and that's for a reason. This is a very in-depth look on painting. Uh, Richard uh, recently passed, but he had over 70 years of experience in, in painting and he brings that to this book. It's a collection of processes, ideas on painting, uh, learning uh, methodologies, uh, as well as very uh, deep discussions on uh, edges and their importance uh, and philosophies on the whole life of the painter and going outside and drawing from life and, and, and all of that. Uh, so we're going to be covering everything uh, in here. Uh, and without further ado, let's jump right in. Uh, in the first chapters uh, in, in this uh, intro, chapter one plus intro, it is a very good uh, point to really come back over and over again. I've been rereading this book uh, now for the second time, uh, and boy, I thought that I understood it from the first time and I got everything from it uh, and now I'm seeing that I have way more experience on that and I'm getting way uh, better in understanding uh, what uh, he's talking about here. Uh, also, uh, Carl Ortiz has a same, uh, a, a similar uh, relationship with books. She loves going back to uh, books. For example, Creative Illustration by Andrew Loomis. Uh, and it's way more clear when you go back uh, and read through uh, stuff with uh, experience uh, under your, your belt. So definitely this chapter is worth uh, checking out one uh, again and again. Uh, I'll go s over some quotes, some interesting quotes. Uh, and after that, uh, he goes through what uh, the direct painting process is. He has a lot of great references from masters like Sargent, Zorn, Sorolia. Uh, so he's bringing a lot of these discussions here. Uh, even uh, he, he has a, a point where he talks about uh, Bill Mosby that was one of his teachers. Uh, and, and he talks about Mosby going to a, a workshop by uh, Sorolia uh, and, and being amazed by the speed uh, with which uh, he painted. Uh, so it's very interesting to have all those amazing um, references as well as direct experience with some of the biggest names in painting uh, in history. Uh, so then he goes into like starting uh, block in, uh, different block in strategies, uh, drawing from life and its importance, controlling values, controlling edges, uh, color and light. Uh, he goes briefly into that, uh, but and then he goes into one of the most important chapters as well, uh, the palette and, and, and vital charts. This is the type of uh, content that most people will just jump through. Uh, but definitely if you take the time and, and I've seen some uh, artists and oil painters doing that and going through that process of building the palettes. We'll get to that later on. Uh, and it's really important and really interesting. You can do that with watercolors. I also have seen uh, artists like uh, Gonzalo Carcamo um, that teaches at Schoolism, for example. Uh, he's Chilean, but has lived in Brazil for a long time. Uh, he uh, also, the first class is using your watercolors and getting used to, to the medium. Uh, and one great way would be to like do a chart as uh, uh, Richard is suggesting here. So uh, last but not least, color harmony, composition, uh, and then like more of technique, uh, painting from life and uh, painting from uh, photos. Uh, and last, oh, sorry, I, I was a little uh, down here. So, sorry, uh, painting from life again and painting from photos. Uh, and then uh, final chapter, the magic. That I'll leave uh, for you to, to get to that. Uh, so going through some of the content here uh, and some of the pages, uh, as I said before, the intro in the first uh, chapter uh, on, on good ideas and, and advice is really good. Uh, he talks about uh, 
painting and getting to the point of painting, uh, learning, uh, failure, uh, and, and all of that, when everything goes wrong, and and uh, some of the mistakes that he finds uh, to be the the most crucial. I would love to go through some of uh, his quotes, uh, and I got some of them in here from the book. Uh, so I love this one, the first one that for your painting to succeed, you need three things. Uh, the first that only you can do, and I think that's great to uh, really stress out. Uh, why do you want to paint your subject? I think that's a big question. If you've seen, uh, uh, there is a, a TED talk on, on why. Uh, it's a big one on self-help and, and, and all of that. Uh, it's definitely, it comes down to, to, to what he's saying here. Uh, analytical uh, grasp, so understanding values, edges, shapes, uh, colors, uh, and all of that, and having the skill to control the process uh, of painting as a whole. Uh, medium, uh, paints, uh, time to drying, um, relationship between the colors, uh, and, and, and all of that. Uh, the second is trying to not do something again uh, if you've if you've done uh, something wrong uh, but most learning comes from the repetition of the correct action uh, so if if you repeat the same mistake you are simply relearning it deeper and deeper so uh, focus on on not doing that uh, very important one uh, paint with unhurried pleasure uh, especially at the start uh, enjoy all the process the, the small colors that you're putting there uh, and uh, I, I think this is really important because a lot of artists I know uh, tend to rush things uh, especially in the beginning stages so do a quick thumb oh it's done let's do it and, and jump to details too early uh, and, and they get a painting that in the end they don't like anymore uh, but they have to finish because they want to post it or uh, they want a portfolio piece that won't be strong uh, so uh, it's it, it's interesting uh, and one uh, great analogy here uh, move uh, like mountain climbers because they are never in a hurry if you make some mistake if you do something wrong when you're mountain climbing it probably could cost your life so you are there you are in the moment you are cherishing the moment as well so uh, remember that I think from the next one uh, the, the most important is on looseness and if we look at Sargent's paintings and, and, and Richard's uh, we tend to call them loose uh, but as he stresses uh, looseness should describe only the painting how it looks and not how it's done uh, so I think this is great quote uh, as well uh, and, and finally, last but not least, uh, that a painting is composed, every stroke, brush stroke is composed by shape, value, uh, length, thickness, color, edges, uh, and, and so on. Uh, so basically, uh, step back from the painting, make a critical evaluation after you've done your brush stroke, uh, and then uh, stack back to the canvas, uh, and either uh, leave it or uh, modify it uh, if necessary. Uh, some people say that Sargent did that uh, a lot when painting. Uh, he went uh, away from the painting, uh, looked on, on a one-to-one -one scale, went back to the painting, did a stroke, went, uh, walked away, and then compared. Uh, he's even saying that here. Uh, it worked for Zorn. Uh, Sorolla and Sargent. It works for him and it work, It will work for you as well. Uh, the same for digital painters. Uh, uh, zoom out and then uh, zoom back in and make that uh, next stroke. Uh, I, I think this is gold information um, and, and, and should be uh, taken uh, not taken lightly. Uh, so this is, is, is great. So going back pretty quickly, uh, just to, to finalize the, the flip through uh, the book. Uh, here uh, is what I just said, that uh, a brush stroke has a right place, a shape and size, 
colors, values, and edges. Uh, and I think that's a, a great way to uh, structure uh, what that should do. Uh, blocking, different types of blocking. Uh, so he goes like line and value, uh, like warm underpainting, uh, here more lines and, and, and values, but uh, on, on a very complicated uh, subject, if we just zoom in, a very complicated uh, subject here. Uh, then more blockings uh, using line uh, and uh, focusing on one part of the painting, uh, uh, leaving the painting on the, the initial stages. Uh, that's also uh, possible. Uh, more of an impressionistic blocking. And then uh, going into uh, a, a specific point uh, as well and building from that. Uh, so here you can see in detail uh, he's going through uh, getting that right first and then uh, expanding from that. Uh, drawing from life, so a lot of great value comes, comes from that. Uh, talking about values, the chapter on values and different value steps. Um, summing it all up and, and talking about squinting. I think this is one of the best, and I'm gonna zoom in for that, this is one of the best examples on squinting. So this is the image as you see with full color, full details and all. If you squint a little bit, uh, you will see some of the values mixing together, especially on the trees, as well as the, the shadow part of the, the building. Uh, some of the tombstones will highlight, but uh, not all of them. And if you even squint more, you can really separate in three to four uh, values uh, the whole image. So this is amazing, like, and he's describing here uh, what that looks like in terms of squinting. Uh, so definitely take the time uh, on this page, uh, it's, it's, it's super worth it. Uh, more on uh, exactly what edges uh, are and that discussion, that's a very deep discussion. Uh, so you should definitely take that time uh, and understand edges. Uh, color relationships, uh, so, oh, sorry, it's starting from here. So this is talking about edges uh, again, uh, and more of the physics of that. Color relationships, uh, more of a monochromatic scheme. Uh, the color wheel, so he goes in through, uh, into that part and th those details. Um, this is uh, pretty much what we see uh, all across uh, courses on color and light. Uh, so color, uh, cool light produces warm shadows and warm light produces cool shadows. Uh, and then uh, he gets to the palette. Uh, so I'm gonna take some time to discuss the palette. Uh, the first thing, uh, he really uh, makes a, a great analogy here. Try to imagine the palette as flowers. You could simplify this this part of the image, and I'm gonna even try and do it really quickly here. If we had uh, a layer uh, through copy and add a filter uh, distortion and um, I think it's pixelate, yeah, crystallize. So we can add that to to in there. Uh, we can even make that smaller if we, if we want, but that will convey the idea. Uh, so that's basically what we're looking at uh, in there, but way more complex. But the more we simplify, the closer we would get to something like this. So try and imagine that, and every stroke here will need to come from your uh, palette and the control that you have on your palette. So the idea is to just get all your colors uh, in, in here, uh, we have all the colors that uh, he uses. Uh, so for example, like uh, cadmium, cadmium uh, yellow, uh, we're gonna start, uh, the first chart is to do uh, five values, just adding white. So uh, cadmium yellow with white and, and so on and so forth uh, for like viridian uh, and white. And, and then he starts doing uh, more uh, I don't know, uh, it's on the other side. More exploration on each one of those. 
So uh, in this case, transparent uh, oxide red, transparent oxide red plus uh, cadmium uh, yellow, uh, and plus all the other colors uh, on the palette. He's use, even using like a, a palette knife to do this kind of thing. So you gain both uh, the skills with the palette knife as well as understanding of your whole palette. Uh, so this is gonna be, uh, I, I think he has 11. Um, and, and looking at here, we can see uh, it's 11 uh, that he has. So it's gonna be 11 charts. Uh, you should do uh, one of each. Uh, and then uh, he goes into more of a, a, a high key uh, palette and he uses a lot of what he has uh, done before. If we also do the same as we did before uh, and just copy uh, and do a crystallized uh, filter uh, on that, we'll have, uh, and I'll even make the cell, uh, cells bigger you have a little bit of the palette that uh, he's using there. So a great way to really uh, take a look at what is in there. Uh, so color relationships, uh, once again, uh, so complementary colors, uh, uh, red to green, yellow to violet, and so on and so forth. Uh, mud uh, color, uh, and then he goes into composition using some of his uh, example, as well as some paintings by uh, Nancy, uh, his wife. Uh, as well as drawings by another artist. Uh, I love this watercolor, uh, and I think uh, he's also a, an amazing artist in any medium. Um, and also this tiger in watercolor, so but it's it's really amazing. Uh, so that's it, that's uh, Alla Prima 2 uh, in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed uh, the video. Uh, if you did, you probably will enjoy my review on uh, James Gurney's uh, Color and Light. Uh, that's also a great book to have. That, that's a way uh, cheaper book, but full of a lot of insights. I also did uh, a six month guide to studying uh, Color and Light. Uh, so you might enjoy that uh, next. Uh, and thanks for watching, and I hope to see you on another video. Have a great one.